What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Today we're gonna to be discussing nutritional diet basics. Let's get started. So to begin, let's look at the foundations of our nutritional diet basics. What are they? That's our carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Oh my. So to begin, we're going to talk about our carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the preferred source of energy because it helps pr promote normal fat metabolism, spares protein, as well as enhances lower gastrointestinal function. Major sources of carbohydrates include grains, milk, fruits, and vegetables. Inadequate carbohydrate intake will ultimately affect our metabolism. When it comes to fats, Fats provide a concentrated source of stored energy. It protects our internal organs as well as maintains our body's temperature. It also helps enhance absorption of those fat-soluble vitamins. Diets that are high in fat, however, can lead to obesity and increased risk factors related to cardiovascular disease and some cancers. An adequate intake of those essential fatty acids can lead to clinical manifestations of cold sensitivity, skin lesions, increased risk of infections, and amenorrhea in women. Let's talk about those good old proteins. That's our amino acids because they're made up of proteins. They really are critical when it comes to every aspect of growth and development. Essential amino acids are required because the body cannot manufacture them. So it's very important that we have a good intake of proteins. Proteins also help build and repair body tissues, regulate body fluids, maintain acid-base balance, produce antibodies, provide us energy, and produce enzymes and hormones. An adequate protein can cause protein energy malnutrition and severe wasting of fat and muscle tissues. Besides our previous foundation of nutritional diet basics, we also have vitamins, minerals, electrolytes, and water. So to begin, vitamins help facilitate metabolism of our proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, and act as a catalyst for metabolic functions. Vitamins promote life and growth processes and maintain and regulate body functions. Fat-soluble vitamins such as A, D, E, and K can be stored in the body, so an excess can be toxic. B and C vitamins are water-soluble vitamins that are not stored in the body and are easily excreted through our urine. So how do we obtain these water and fat-soluble vitamins? Well, when it comes to our water-soluble vitamins and food sources, we begin by looking at folic acid. You can obtain that through green leafy vegetables, liver, beef, and fish, legumes, grapefruit, and oranges. Niacin is another water-soluble vitamin, and you can get that through meats, poultry, fish, beans, peanuts, as well as grains. Vitamin B1, known as thiamine, which we give a lot to our chronic alcohol patients, is pork and nuts, whole grain cereals, as well as legumes. Vitamin B2, you can get that through your milk, lean meats, fish, and grains. Vitamin B6, yeast, corn, meat, poultry, and fish. Vitamin B12, you get that a lot through your meats and your livers. Uh, and vitamin B C is through citrus fruits, tomatoes, broccoli, and cabbage. When it comes to our fat-soluble vitamins and food sources, vitamin A can be ingested with liver, egg yolks, whole milk, green or orange vegetables and fruits. Vitamin D with our fortified milk, fish oils, and cereals. Vitamin E with our vegetable oils, green leafy vegetables, cereal, apricots, apples, and peaches. And lastly, vitamin K is with our green leafy vegetables, cauliflower, and cabbage. So what's up with our minerals and electrolytes and why are they important? Well, minerals are components of our hormones, cells, tissues, and bones. So minerals act as a catalyst for chemical reactions and help enhance cellular function. A deficiency of minerals can develop in chronically ill or hospitalized patients. When it comes to our electrolytes, electrolytes play a major role in osmolality and body water regulation, acid-base balance, 
enzyme reactions and neuromuscular activity. So it's very important when we're looking at our minerals and our electrolytes that we keep a very close eye because they do a lot of different chemical reactions within our body. And then lastly, water. It is critical for cellular function. Why? Because it makes up 60 to 70% of total body weight. We're primarily water. We cannot survive without water for more than a few days. So what are some malnutrition laboratory markers that we can look at when it comes to our nutritional diet basics? Well, there's various hematological studies that can help evaluate protein balance. Our complete blood cell counts with red blood cell smears help differentiate between anemias and nutritional deficiencies. Long-term protein status can be determined by evaluating our serum albumin levels. Short-term protein status can be determined by evaluating our retinal binding proteins, prealbumin, transferrin, creatinine, and blood urea nitrogen, also known as your BUN. Serum electrolytes, obviously we just had a discussion about that. And nitrogen balance can be evaluated by measuring urea in the urine, which provides information regarding protein loss. One of the main goals that you will find once you have that RN behind your name is how are we going to educate our hospitalized patients regarding nutrition? I want to preface this by saying that all patients should always consult a nutritionalist for individual dietary recommendations. However, the government's website, www.choosemyplate.gov, is a tremendous resource that helps provide what a balanced diet looks like in regards to grains, vegetables, fruit, dairy products, as well as protein. Some of the guidelines that you will find on there is avoiding eating oversized portions of food, fill half of the plate with fruits and vegetables, vary the type of vegetables and fruits eaten, select at least half of the grains as whole grains, ensure that the foods from the dairy group are high in calcium, you want to drink milk that is either fat-free or low in fat, eat protein foods that are lean, select fresh foods over frozen and canned foods, and drink water rather than liquids that contain sugar. I hope that this video was helpful for you in understanding nutritional diet basics. If you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure that you check me out on my social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe here on YouTube and hit that bell notification so you are aware every time I post a new video. Check out my website at nursechung.com where there's additional resources to help you pass those skills exams as well as your NCLEX. But until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye!